again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Wood Resurrected. Uh, today, I'm going to be doing some repairs. Um, the girlfriend's favorite chair is starting to come apart. Looks like some of the, the glue joints let loose on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take the the bottom sheet off of the chair and see what we're working with and see if we can get in there and maybe get this repaired so that uh, it can be used again. So. Before we get to that, uh, if you all would, uh, please click that subscribe button and uh, click the bell icon so you get notified of future content. That way I can get uh, up to 1,000 subscribers is the goal, and that way I can get monetized. And if I can get it monetized and have a little bit of supplemental income, then I can get it to where I can do, uh, do more projects and uh, help with uh, funding that way. So I'd greatly appreciate if you do that. So let's get on with the project. I've tried to repair this chair before. It's come apart like this uh, in a previous instance, and I tried to do it without having to take it apart. So I basically just threw some wood glue into the, the joints there, kind of threw it back together, clamped it down. But that obviously didn't hold, so I'm gonna have to go further into detail. You can see that the, the dowels are exposed and that the joints have actually let loose on this. So in order to see what's going on, I'm gonna have to pull this mesh off of the bottom of the chair in order to see what's underneath it. And that is held in by a bunch of staples. So I've got a, a pick here and I'm just working my way under the staples and prying them out. I'm trying not to damage the, the mesh or the, the wood of the chair too much and then later we can reinstall this. So I'm basically just gonna go through and pull all those staples out and that way I can get access to the bottom of the chair. So with the staples loosened up, I have a screwdriver here if needs be, I can pry underneath the bottom side of those staples. But I just pried them out a little bit with the pick and all I've got is a needle nose vice grip here. I'm just grabbing a hold of the staples and just pulling them out. Because they're not entirely large and they're, they're not in tight enough that you can't just pull them out if uh, with a little effort. So I figured this way I wouldn't have to pry on the bottom of the chair at all and I could just remove the staples directly. So. Basically, I'm just going through here and getting all these staples removed and then we can lay this cloth down and see what's underneath it. So with this mesh off, you can kind of see underneath there's a couple of uh, cross members that go, there's supports that go between the sides and the front and they help stabilize it so that uh, they're not taking all the load. It also keeps them relatively square, but the problem is that they've pulled out a little bit from the previous time that the joints came loose. So that's why I can't really get the joints as tight as I, I need them to. And they also push the chair apart instead of doing the purpose that they're supposed to and keeping it together. So you can see that, that one that's in the, the other corner I just pulled out. It's just held in by a couple of staples on each end. I was really not that impressed with it. So we're gonna pull that one out. Then I believe this side gives me a little bit more resistance. So I have to uh, get a pry bar or a, a J bar if you will and pry this one out so that we can get the staples pulled out of it and uh, get it cleaned up so that we can put them back in later. So I'm trying to do this as gingerly as possible. I don't want to have to pry on uh, the chair very much so I'm basically just trying to, to use the block that's there and just lever it out of there so that I don't have to worry about marring up or, or messing up the chair at all. But uh, it was actually, there was the, the underside of the cloth was still attached. They apparently stapled that down before they put the top of the chair on and I'm really not wanting to, to mess with the seat. So I'm basically just uh, prying the staples out of this and then pulling the staples out of the cloth and then uh, proceeding from there so so at this point we can start pulling the the joints apart because most of these joints that I'm pulling apart are already either the wood glue joint is broken or it's loose so it's basically just a matter of, of flexing the chair just enough so that I can get these these joints apart and as you can see I, I pulled the the other side out and then we're just gonna go through and we're going to disconnect the, the front 
cross member that goes across the front of the chair. And then from there, we're going to, I believe we end up removing one of the front legs entirely. And the other one, uh, we just hinge on, on the back. But we do get both of the, the joints that are on the front of the chair disconnected so that we can get access to the holes and get things cleaned up. So for now, I just take this uh, leg and swing it up and out of the way so it doesn't hit anything. So a lot of these joints have some leftover glue, maybe pieces of wood from the legs on them. So what I'm doing is I got a, a quarter inch chisel here and I'm just going through and cleaning them up so that they're a smooth, flat surface. There isn't a bunch of residual glue or wood pieces or anything else on it. I think a couple of them might have even had staples in them. So I'm just going through cleaning those up, removing those so that it's a nice clean dowel and that uh, I can reuse this joint. And I'm going to do that on all four of the legs, both sides of the legs that have the holes for the dowels as well as the surfaces including the, the bottom part of that one arm that the joint was loose on and the, the dowel pieces themselves as you can see here, I'm, I'm cleaning that up. So once those are all cleaned up, the holes that are in these legs have some residual glue from the uh, half-ass uh, glue job that I did last time when I was attempting to just get it solid again. So I've got a 3 8 inch uh, drill bit on my drill here and they're 3 8 dowels so I'm just going in and drilling out any of that uh, leftover glue from the last time so that the dowel can actually make it all the way in the hole. Now that everything's cleaned up, I'm going to start doing some gluing and get things put back together. And the best way I've found, the way I prefer to do this, is I've got a small dowel. I think it's maybe like a 3 16 or maybe even a smaller than that. But um, I'm using this piece of dowel, I just put glue on that, and then I can actually go down into the hole and get it uh, spread out evenly inside of there. That way all the, the inside of the hole surface has good coverage for, for wood glue. So I'm going to do that on both the legs. I'm only going to do it on one set of holes though. So the part that you can see next to my head there with the, the dowel sticking out of it, that's the, the piece that I'm going to attach the legs to. And since the other one is still attached to the, the arm, I'm going to glue the bottom side of that one as well. And we're going to put glue in those and then we're going to... And since the glue joint on the arm that's laying next to the leg here also came loose, we're going to glue that as well so that we can glue the arm and the, uh, the leg at the same time. That way they're, they're attached on, both legs are attached on the front side of the chair and the arms. Because this chair is round, clamping it was a endeavor in itself. Um, if you have someone there to help you, this isn't so hard of a process, but what I ended up having to do was I'm going to lay a board across the, the back side of the chair, specifically across the top of the, the back legs. And that's a 2x6 I think, and then I got a 2x4 across the top. But as you can see, I had to balance these clamps on here in order for them to stay because this chair has a tendency to roll and you put that much weight on one side and it'll roll one way or the other. So I had to suspend both of them off of that 2x4 up top and then uh, clamp them down individually. So the reason I used to, wanted to use a, a flat surface, uh, i.e. the 2x4 on top, is because I want to try to make these legs as square as possible like they're supposed to be. but because of uh, the way they've been for so long of a period of time, they were kind of tilted inward. So basically what I'm doing is just trying to get those as flat as possible and then I'm just putting enough pressure on the clamps to keep those legs nice and tight. I don't want to stress or break the, the legs or the back of the chair itself. So I just wanted to get it nice and solid so that we can get that glue to set and uh, have a good solid leg that we can uh, put the front cross member into. So because I glued this arm back on, I want to have just enough pressure on it to keep it down and keep it tight so that way when the wood cures, or excuse me, when the glue cures, the, uh, the two pieces of wood, the arm and the leg will be nice and solid. So I had to 
use uh, some pressure to keep this board in here and then at the bottom of the leg is where the other end of the clamp is at but uh, I'm just getting it snug just to keep it set and then uh, that way it'll be nice and solid when we're, we're ready to take the clamps off. Yeah, because of the condition of these joints before I repaired them, I don't want to risk any of them pulling apart. So I'm going to wait the full 24 hours to let this glue dry and be nice and solid before I take those clamps off. So in the meantime, we have those cross members that go underneath between the side boards and the front boards. And they still have staples in them. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and get those pulled out, probably clean them up a little bit with, with the chisel, just remove any any glue or residue between the surface and uh, where it was, was glued and stapled before. So now that this glue has dried, we can remove the clamps and we can assemble the front board that goes between the legs and we'll glue that in and then we'll clamp that down as well. So in order to get this board back in here, we're probably gonna have to uh, put a little outward pressure on the legs just to get the, the dowels inside. And then uh, once we get that lined up, we can get them into the holes and then we'll, uh, we'll clamp from there. So when clamping this, again, I'm gonna use a piece of two by four on either end just to make sure that I can spread the, the pressure out that I'm putting on that joint. Is, uh, as wide as possible and then from there it's just a matter of snugging it up and checking the the joints to make sure that they're good and, and snug and that there aren't any gaps so before that glue sets completely what I want to do is see if I can get these these brackets in there and what I'm doing is I'm pre-drilling holes because instead of using staples like they used before I'm gonna use a couple of deck screws in each end and that should be able to, to hold much better and be more, more solid than the previous staple method that was used. And because the, the front of that chair is pulled backwards by the, the seat itself, it's kind of tilted, so it's kind of angled more towards the, the outside legs, uh, the back legs actually. So what I want to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw it into the, the front board first and then I'm going to use a clamp and a spare piece of uh, cutoff 2x4 that I'm going to use to slide that back and that should pull that front board down a little bit and make it more, more flush with the front and then we can screw the bottom sides of those angled boards that uh, provide the support in the corners. Although I didn't show it and I had some camera issues, but uh, I did pre-drill the holes in the chair itself as well, not just these cross supports. So you wanna remove material for the center of the screw, that way it only grabs, it doesn't actually split or try to separate the wood as it gets pulled in. So I pre-drilled those in the, the corner supports, pre-drilled them in the chair, and then I mounted the top two and then use the clamp to pull everything back and then I'm pre-drilling those bottom holes and then in uh, inserting the screws and finishing up the installation on them. So having let the glue dry for 24 hours, uh, I'm fairly certain that this is well set and I can take the clamps off and then all we have left to do is to button up the, the bottom of the chair and get that mesh over the bottom and staple that in. So with that back on we can go and set it down and see how well of, uh, how good of a job we did. See how stable it is, see if it, uh, it wiggles. I'm trying to find a flat spot on the floor. She's good and solid though. Alright, I think that'll wrap it up. We got the chair glued together, it's nice and solid. So don't forget to share if you would please and hit that subscribe and the bell icon for me and we will see you next time.